Hello guys, in this video, we'll review and discuss the changes in latest Rust stable Rust 1.89.0. As always in these release review videos, we'll not just simply go through the doc. Instead, we'll do a comparison where we'll run the latest in Rust Playground and a prior version on my local, observe the changes, understand the difference, discuss, and at the end of the video, we can run this command to gather update on our systems. Let's start with the first change that we have is explicitly inferred argument to const generics. Let's try to understand with an example. In this example, we have a function with const generic parameter. And right here, if you guys see, we have to repeat explicitly the length. We have to tell the length again, and only then we are able to run this function on the prior version. And we get our output. But what if we try to infer? So we can just try to infer and now if we run this as you can see it says using it for array length is unstable and we can't use it in the prior versions while if we try to run the exact same code instead of repeatedly specifying the length we just infer and now if we run this as you can see without any errors we are able to successfully run in the latest stable version so this change has been made stable but remember it's only stable for these functions but in const or signatures it's still not stable so we are not allowed to use this in uh, const or uh, signatures another example uh, for the same where we are successfully able to infer instead of repeatedly specifying the size so if i run this in the latest table it works completely fine let's go to the next change another important change and i would say very useful is lifetime relation and function signatures let's try to understand with an example we have a vector here and then we have a items old function which returns iterator and then we just print the first because we are just printing it once so it will just print the first now if we run this this would work completely fine without any errors but if you observe a little and if you have been working with lifetimes by the way if you are new to rust lifetimes is something that you should grasp very well and there are some videos on this channel should be popping somewhere on right top make sure to click it watch it so there is a hidden lifetime here as you can see scores is attached to some reference and so there should be some return type lifetime as well how long could this iter be used but currently it's hidden and when i say hidden the return type here has a lifetime attached but there is no visual indication that tells you to be careful while using this function as there is a lifetime attached and you might run into you know those mismatch of uh, scope and stuff but if we try to run the same in the latest let's see what happens as you can see we get a warning here that says hiding a lifetime that's lighted elsewhere is confusing uh, this lifetime is lighted here and the same lifetime is hidden here as you can see so what it tells you basically to be careful while using and uh, as you can see it also uh, you know gives you what you can do to solve the problem so it's a, i would say a pretty good uh, warning or indication uh, for those who are new to rust or even for the pro uh, developers to better use the lifetimes and be careful uh, of the indications yeah so let's move to the next changes now we have is more x86 target feature. this change is pretty straightforward uh, the target feature attribute that we specify usually uh, when we are building applications or piece of code for uh, to run differently on different uh, targets now we can uh, specify sha512 sm3 sm4 kl and all different targets that are supported now kind of same is true for doc test as well so when you run the doc test uh, doc tests are tests which you add on top of your functions uh, you know uh, in, in in your documentation in your code documentation and now you can specify the target to run for specific targets as well another change on the type that would now not trigger the lint uh, improper c types definition so previously using signed and unsigned 128 bit number would trigger uh, improper c types definition when using with external c but now that's not the case and and a major update in this change which is 
this release, the one that we are discussing, Rust 1.89.0, will be the last release for x86-64 Apple Darwin in the tier 1 target for Rust because, you know, uh, there is a planned removal of uh, uh, Mac OS x86-64. Uh, so Rust is kind of demoting uh, target from tier 1. And you can read this uh, on uh, for this users and stuff uh, on the impact and uh, stuff. Uh, there are some more platform specific changes, which is, you know, uh, all the language specific that we already covered in the start. But this change has more of the, you know, these platform changes and stuff. And then there are some stabilized APIs that we always get in all the release in normal as well as const context, which you can just try running on your end. And uh, if you find any issues, let me know in the comments. So not much exciting stuff in this release in terms of the chain set but yeah i mean a uh, couple of changes that i uh, kind of like is one is this lifetime stuff and then inferring uh, explicitly so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys understand and learn something new if you do like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic until then bye bye